I am absolutely ready, Chris, and good day to you, and thank you so much for having me back. It's been so long. I'm so happy to be back here with you. It has been a long time, Wayne, because you were here for the very first 12-hour marathon, and you played a significant role in making that a reality and helping us keep this show going. So I really appreciate you, man, from the bottom of my heart. You are, are such a huge support and encourager and empowerer of people, and especially me, to make my dreams a reality with Burn Up Coaching, with our self-help empire that we're creating, and I couldn't have done without you, man. Thank you. Well, I'm very happy to be able to support in the way I have, and it's it's been a long journey here, and I'm looking forward to the next leg of this journey where it takes us. It's going to be a lot of fun, definitely. Yes, it is. So, Wayne, we're going to dive into the theme of the day, which is, what does 100 mean to you? Uh, so what does that mean for you, 100? What does that mean, Wayne? Well, 100 has multiple meanings for me. The first meaning is financial, like, you know, you have a calculator, and you type in on the calculator, 100. <laughs> Uh, never mind. <laughs> anyway, 100%. It also means completion because I hear it burned up coaching. As you know, we like to say, I am 100%, 100% of the time. Yes. That's another mean. Another meaning of 100% or 100 is doing things 100 times over and over again. And mm -hmm. since this is the 100th anniversary episode of Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self, formerly Ideas Matter Having Fun, yep. it seems really wonderful. And I just have to say, and I want to say it right now, well done. Well done. Well done. We, we made it. You did it. We did it. I did. We all did it. It was fun. That's right. That's right. And this is just the beginning. So I, I love that, Wayne. And I mentioned it in your bio, but why don't you share a little bit more about who you are, what you stand for, and what your clients specifically come to you for and what they, what they really resonate, why they hire Wayne Myers. Well, on stage, I'm known as the voice of personal development because I'm that voice that everyone uh, really needs to hear, should hear. And must at some point if they want to grow here, but for some reason, I don't know whether they got something in their ear or whatever the case is, they tend to look away. They, they don't want to hear it always. Mm. I mean, you're famous for saying the truth doesn't hurt, it burns. But as the voice of personal development, it's my role and responsibility with courage and confidence to encourage the person, but also to tell it like it is. I shoot from the hip. No room for BS. We don't have mm. time for that. And offstage – in a more private setting with high net worth clients, uh, clients hire me and hire us at Burn Up Coaching Inc. Uh, because we value privacy, secrecy, and sense of information. We treat confidentiality very seriously. As you know, anything that is off stage under agreement is between us and the client. Anything in front of a camera like this on on air, well, that's public. But yeah. so I think that's one of the reasons. I think it's because you really need a powerful mirror to give you great feedback to become to continue being and becoming your greatest possible self. And we do that. It's different for every client. Yeah. Every person has their unique challenges. There are certain universal themes, of course. Yeah. Uh, everyone needs more courage and confidence. Everyone needs to break through their BS. Everyone needs to be held accountable, yeah. whether it's themselves holding themselves accountable or a coach or a mentor or someone who's really, really good at it. Yeah. So those are some of the general themes. And everyone has something specific. Uh, did yeah. that answer your question? It did. That was great, Wayne. Thank you for, for sharing that. And you are super empowered. You're super conscious about your language. You're a total creator and, and creator of your reality and victory. You're, you, you're, you're always in this victory mindset. How do we create more victory? How do we create more achievement, success, happiness, fulfillment? And that's really, really empowering. And I want to hear how did you get to where we are today? What was, what was some of those lessons or principles or things that you picked up along the way that helped you grow into the into being the CEO of Burn It Up Coaching? Well, I think that some of the lessons I learned along the way had a lot to do with principles, time-tested universal principles. I remember when I was younger, I would listen over and over to this one 20-minute audio segment by Benjamin Franklin. It's called The Way to Wealth. Hmm. And he said in that, and I'm going to paraphrase in modern English because it's older English, that not a tenth part of the wisdom was his own, but merely all the gleanings he had made of the wealth of ages and nations. And so basically, he had gone on and had studied and read books and quotes by all these great people uh, from all times and had compiled it into a book, which was later recorded as an audio, and that's how I got access to it. And I realized then and there that part of being wise, part of having wisdom, wasn't necessarily to take your own ideas, but to look at 
other people's ideas and see if there are any time-tested universal principles, ergo the wisdom of the ages, that work in every place and time. One of those for success that I think is really important, especially long-term success, and I will hope to give you a definition of success in long-term because there is a difference, mm. but if you will do what most people won't, you can have what most people can't. It's so simple, but that is one of the keys to success. I think another one is what Henry Ford said when he said, whether you think you can or think you can't, either way you're right. I will say to couch this that a right mindset isn't enough to just achieve success. It's one of many, many ingredients, but I've never met a successful man or woman who didn't have as a prerequisite the right mindset. And it's about what you think. If you can see a strong, clear, definite vision for it. I think another lesson, just to give a third and final one along the way is that and this comes from T. Harv Eker's teachings. He talks about how you have to be in the right place, the right time, right vehicle, and be the right you. Mm. And that's some of the keys. You must be all of those things to achieve uh, success and to step into that role. It also helps when uh, you, you happen to know the people and were part of the creation of the whole process and the main supporter for so many years. So did that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was great. So I, I think I really hear that it's the principles that you, you picked up and uh, mindset was a big one. The wisdom of the ages, what is time tested? What are other people doing? How do we model success so that we can create it in our own dimension? Because we can't necessarily do what Henry Ford did because he lived in a different era at a different time, a different uh, place, a different vehicle that he had to create his impact and billions and billions of dollars. So we get to model the type of thinking, the type of perspective, and then also the behaviors and habits that he did and find what works for us and find the, the principles that he was leveraging to be able to create our own success. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why can't we do what Henry Ford did? It was simple. It was easy. It worked. Why can't we do well? We can't. We can't create. We we can't revolutionize the car industry the way he did it by by mass mass manufacturing the assembly line and being able to do that for cars because it's that revolution, so to speak, has already been done. So it's it, it's not that we can't do what he did by activating the same principles. It's just that his invention, his brilliance, his creation has already taken place in history. So we get to build on top of that. We get to stand on the shoulders of giants uh, and create our own new legacy. You're saying we have to make our own way. We have to come up with our own unique inner driven idea. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to dive into success since that's a big thing of what we're talking about today. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's hear the, the definition of success, long-term success, and what's the difference between a short-term success and a long-term success? That's a great series of questions. I heard several questions, so I'll attempt to tackle each and every one, one step at a time. So the definition of success is really simple. We have to ask ourselves, what is success? I mean, really, we could call the, the entire interview, what is success, what is long-term success, but what is long-term success? That's what we coined it. So uh, what is success? The answer is success is getting what you want because you really want it. It's not what your parents, teachers, preachers, friends, and family want. It's about what you really want. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting because that's success. And I, I would make a distinction, a distinct difference between instant success or immediate success and long-term success. Instant success is about that, getting what you want because you really want it. Long-term success, and I haven't gotten the perfect working definition yet, but I'm, I make you bane on it, is more about making sure that the actions you take today will lead to the tomorrow you want to experience. It's about the journey. It's about enjoying the journey, making sure you're aiming for a desired destination that you actually want to arrive at. Yeah. I also, I know we've, we've back and forth, I don't want to say batted around, but we've used, do you like who you're be, being right now? Do you enjoy who you're being? Are you, is, it, is it fulfilling? And do you like who you're becoming? Is it, do you check both boxes? Because if you don't like who you're becoming, then you might feel good in the short term, but long term, you're not going to be fulfilled and it's not sustainable. Or there could be some really consequences that, that are going to impact you long term and, and hurt your life and, and make your life not enjoyable, not, not meaningful. And then on the contrary, if you don't like who you're being right now, but someday maybe you will like who you're becoming, then you're sacrificing being able to have have fun, be playful, enjoy the moment, be grateful, be appreciative in 
in exchange for someday maybe long-term fulfillment? You know, it's interesting. I don't think we would ever use or I would never use the word sacrifice because sacrifice mm-hmm. implies that you're trading something you don't value or I should say something you do value for something you don't. And that's Ayn Rand, author of Atlas Shrugged, who said that. I would say it's a trade-off. But going back to your original question about liking who you're being and who you're becoming, absolutely. When it comes to be, uh, being and becoming your greatest possible self, th- there's a secret. You have to like who you're being and like who you're becoming. And if I was ever not liking who I was being in the moment, I would pause and say, who would I like to be being instead? And then I would quickly move back into that. And then with the becoming, liking who you're becoming, it's very simple. That's more of the long term. So absolutely, you could use that as a very simple way to talk about the difference between immediate success and long term success. Because immediate success, instant success is about liking who you're being in the moment. We won the battle. Yeah. Liking who you're becoming is winning the war. Yeah, I love it. And uh, I want to I want to talk about the journey to success for for me personally, and then I'll uh, I want to highlight spotlight your success and and especially in being CEO of Burn Up Coaching. But for me, it was it was figuring out who I am and what I stand for. A lot of our journey together, I was just trying to figure out how do I become Chris Burns motivational speaker, Chris Burns coach, Chris Burns, you know, world influencer, someone who's able to empower and and inspire people all over the world and become a household name for that. And along the journey, I really had to discover who am I? What do I stand for? What are my values? What's important to me? And who do I want to be and become? And so that for me was a, a big journey. And a lot of it, you really helped shape my thinking and my approach and how I show up in the world. And I know for you, business was like always a thing for you. How did you know you were you were meant to be a CEO, meant to really focus on business and and embody that for, for your life? Like that was your life purpose. Well, I'll respond this way by saying, know thyself is the ancient wisdom written on the temple of Apollo to know thyself and to discover who you are is really key. And we actually have a tool that is available to anyone who can go to a computer and go to www.burnitupcoaching.com forward slash, I think it's statement of purpose, or just go to burnitupcoaching.com and click on the gifts tab and you will see a statement of purpose box a picture that you can download your very own pdf that you can print out and fill out a statement of purpose to get to know who you are better Mm -hmm. Um, and your question was geared more towards how did i know that i was right for business how did that come about yeah i hear that right or you tell me yep that's that's it i think i was destined to be a success in business i've always loved business i came from a business family Uh, most people grow up around business they have all these ideas about business and money and success Mm -hmm. that just aren't so in my opinion. And my experience was totally opposite to a lot of what most people, I've always been different my whole life. And so I fell in love with business. I started working in business when I was age nine in my parents' office, refilling Xerox copier machines. By 13, I had my own company, a mobile DJ service. It was called a great DJ service, by the way. We did weddings and once in a lifetime events. We did some events for the Four Seasons Resort Aviara in Carlsbad, California. Uh, we, We had a lot of fun with it. I had uh, multiple people working with me on that. And at age 17, I went to Australia. And I was standing in the tallest building in the Southern Hemisphere at that time, Rialto Tower. And I looked over out over the city of Melbourne, beautiful mm-hmm. city at night, the twinkling lights. It was like something out of a U2, a U2 song, the um, a beautiful city of light song. Um, and I'm looking out over there and I see fireworks and I just love fireworks. And mm-hmm. I had this aha moment, this moment where I realized now, I want to be the greatest American businessman to ever live, and that would mean for all practical purposes to become a billionaire. And fast forward in time, meeting you, Chris, at a seminar and doing what I could to help you grow and seeing a greatest, greater possible vision for you than perhaps at that moment in time you at that moment had for yourself because you still are discovering it. And now you know. Yeah. Um, I really feel that personal development is where the fortune is going to be made, where we're going to do the most good. I mean, where else in the world can you make a ton of money? But at the same time, change and transform lives and make a positive impact on everyone you touch. Yeah. That to me is incredible. That to me is the cookie. And we're in the right place, the right time, and we know it, just like Silicon Valley during the computer age. Now we're getting into the age of personal growth and development and professional growth and development. So. Mm. 
I that's love my it. answer. So it's, it's really the seeing the value and high upside for the industry as personal development was for you was attractive. And I also something I acknowledge about personal development is the type of people it attracts is people who want to work on themselves and grow themselves and and evolve and become their greatest possible self. And I think that there's other industries out there that aren't so quick to grow and aren't so quick to to share our share their hearts and and really work on themselves to become a better person because it's it's not safe for them out there. I think a lot of business gets the reputation that it's it's a jungle and that it's it's dangerous and unsafe and you know I think in personal development it's a jungle out there, Chris. It really is. Right. And right. fortunately for us, we're in an industry where our competition is friendly. Yeah. Uh, we're one of the few industries where in personal development, everyone role models everyone else. So there's a lot of room to learn and grow from everyone, but this is the only industry I've ever found where your competition wants you to succeed mm. because it's big enough for the both of you. It's really, it really is that way. And it's very, very interesting. You still have to be careful. Yep. You still have to vet, you have to verify, you have to ask questions, you have to weigh the pros and cons, but it really is that. And the question becomes, how do you move from it's a jungle out there to the, the higher level of thriving? I think the secret is you build layers. You have to first learn to survive before you can thrive. Hmm. I talk about in one of my earlier books, I'm not here to promote that today, so don't ask me for the title, but hmm. I talk about in a chapter of that book that I wrote, being a survivor living to fight another day. Hmm. I think that that's a necessary component of success. There are many people who will be watching this who are just thinking about survival. They're not yet at that level where it's just about growth. And for them, my message to you is keep going, keep growing, do what you can to get where you need to go, but then focus on how can I t get better every single step, every improvement. And always ask yourself, even if I'm in survival mode, how do I move from that to being and becoming my greatest possible self? How do I take a step in the right direction? Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, also, I think some people, there's a lot of spiritual people in personal development community who haven't yet harnessed that natural survival instinct. I know that that was for me a big growth opportunity to be able to harness the, the raw power of drive while still loving people and serving people and, and creating huge impact in the world. And I think it's it's a delicate balance to have of both of saying, okay, I've mastered survival. Now it's time to move into the thriving and, and growing and, and creating more win-wins for everyone around me. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome, man. So I think that that was a, a big part of, of my journey of, of growing. I'm, I'm curious, what else have you learned about yourself in the last couple of years of uh, leading burn up coaching, empowering me and being behind the scenes? What, what, what else have you picked up and, and grown in yourself? Uh, you know, I, I think there's been so much learning, so much value in that experience. Oh my gosh, yeah. my goodness, where do I start? Yeah. So much I've learned in this process. It's one thing to be in it, in first person. It's another thing to do what I've had to do, which is to step into first person, then step into third person, then step back into first person and step mm. back into third person. Mm. And I think I've learned from observing it, both being in both the first person, looking at the experience and the third person together in our journey together so far, yeah. who I've most learned how to do very effectively, which I did somewhat well before, but not nearly as well as now. I think we've mastered the art of flying information. Mm -hmm. I think we've mastered the art of having a true mastermind and working together. I, Chris, you weren't my first mastermind, but I would say you were one of the more productive, longer running ones so far. Yeah. And I've had masterminds in the past, but this was, for me, the ability to have a true mastermind, flying information. I mean, behind you are two wings of the phoenix. Yeah. You have a right wing and a left wing, and we're after the whole bird. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I've learned that who you are is someone who is committed not only to instant success, but to long-term success. And when I, when I first met you, I was in a room with you with lots of other people. Mm -hmm. And you know me, I'm, I'm very selective. Mm -hmm. And I said, that guy is the winner. That's the one. And I just knew. My gut told me this is the one who could make it through with stay true all the way through. And you have stayed true all the way through. And that, to me, is incredible and amazing. And that's what it really takes. And the question is, how do you communicate an idea like long-term success to someone who may not really understand has been, been on that journey before? Right. I mean, think about this for a second. Everyone's been successful to some level in their life. If you're watching this right now and you're thinking for a second about what you're going to eat for dinner, an image pops up in your mind. 
Okay, for, for the vegans, it's going to be vegetarian. For the meat lovers, it's going to be a steak for or filet mignon. For the, uh, for the younger crowd, it's probably going to be a cheeseburger at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. If you're able to successfully have for dinner tonight that image that pops up into your mind, that's successful. It's taking the idea from your head and turning it into reality. Mm -hmm. However, there are certain types of success that can't be achieved overnight. They can't be achieved in a day or an hour, a week, or even a month. You can't climb a mountain in one step, and neither can you prepare for an Olympic game in one practice session. And you certainly can't write a book in that amount of period, at least, at least if it's going to be a good book. These require long-term success. Now, Chris, you've succeeded. We've succeeded. I've succeeded. We've all succeeded with long-term success. A hundredth anniversary marathons, 12 hours, week after week after week. Incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. That's long-term success. Now, how do you explain to the person watching this what you've gone through in the last three years? How do you communicate that? Can it be communicated? I believe that some lessons can't be taught. They must be experienced. But we can maybe in our words give them a glimpse. After all, that is what words and ideas and intentions are for, clear ideas and conclusions. How would you describe it? Yeah, I'd say the, the big thing that I wanted to add to that is you can facilitate someone getting some kind of lesson. You might not be able to tell them, hey, you know, money is good, not money is the root of all evil, not money is, you know, disempowering or only for the elite, so to speak. Money is good. Money helps us share our gifts and our wisdom and impact more people. And it's good to to be a, a generous giver and an excellent receiver and be a great have flow, have money flow through us so that we can serve the world in a bigger way. So how you can't tell someone that and have them live it. Yeah, you, you have to experience it. You have to hold the dollar bill and and appreciate it and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Every single one that you get or get the bill and every time you're able to pay it, say thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm able to make this payment. I have more than enough. I live in abundance. I I have a roof over my head. I have a car. I have food. I have all these things. And when people can experience that, I think that's what makes the the biggest difference. So it's it's really just empowering people to know that they're enough to go through that experience. And and for me, a, a big growth of my own was knowing that I'm worthy enough, knowing that I'm capable enough, really standing up for what I believe in and what's important to me and what I value. And so I really appreciate lots of experiences to do that, to, to charge what I'm worth. Lots of experiences to say, I deserve to be on that stage. Lots of experiences to say, I deserve to be associated with this celebrity or superstar because I have an amazing platform and I deliver massive value to the world. So that experience of feeling like I'm off track and saying, no, 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 that's not quite it. Who I am is this. This is who I am. This is what I stand for. I value truth. I value integrity. I value ethics. I value being my greatest possible self. So to really continuously recommit and redecide to that and see what shows up in life in pursuit of that while having a crystal clear vision and intention and direction and being flexible and adaptable along the way. I think that's that was the greatest thing that I've really learned over the last three years. It's funny you mentioned flexibility and adaptability because when you're holding a long-term success vision, I like to say instant success is about a magnificent obsession with something. I want to go to the restaurant. I want to go to the restaurant. I want that. I want that. I want almost like a, like a spoiled kid in some ways, but it can be very successful. Yeah. But long-term, you have to have that same magnificent obsession while all these distractions and other things. So what happens is you actually find you get off, knocked off the horse a couple of times. You get knocked down six times, get up seven. Yeah. And as a result of that, Long-term success is about that discipline, the daily discipline, the weekly discipline of doing something over and over and over again, even long after the positive emotional feeling and energy at the beginning has worn off. Mm. Everyone needs to have excitement and great energy at the beginning if they're going to go and achieve long-term success. Because mm. you think about it, and I'll use a movie as an analogy here. You have a mo movies, uh, and I'll use a couple science fiction and other not so science fiction, but uh, relevant to today at the time of this recording, what's going on. You have the Avengers, Marvel's mm -hmm. The Avengers series is out. You had recently in the last few years, Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and Star Trek. And in every one of these, the hero goes on a journey. It's a long journey. It's not something that you can do in one step. And in each and every case, long-term success is accomplished by holding to a strong, definite, clear vision, usually with some obstacles or a villain or something of that nature. And in your own life, the story of your own life, you're going to find that there are the same things. Now, how do you deal with those things? Hmm. How do you overcome the resilience? How do you deal with that? 
That's the secret to long-term success, but you're holding a strong, definite, positive vision. Another quick analogy might be the Olympic Games. There is a torch runner, and he takes the torch, and he runs. And if you're on Team USA in the Olympics, and you're running with this torch, and you're running, you're running, you're running to, you know, with, to the next torch bearer. And the objective is that torch has to make it all the way to this big torch in the Olympics, and then they light in the Olympic Games begin. Mm-hmm. Well, that's to symbolize the marathon, the long-term journey, that you couldn't do it with just one runner. You couldn't even do it with 10 runners. It's, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a whole larger-than-life sort of a thing. But long-term success is achievable if you just focus on two things, your starting location and your end destination. Yeah. Also, I, I hear the, the mindset of it. it you, can't, you can't win the Olympics in one day of training and practice. It's really mm-hmm. years and sometimes even a lifetime of dedicating and disciplining yourself to be the Olympian. It's, it, a lot of that is the mindset of who do I, who do I get to be to show up and win that gold medal. And it's like daily, daily, daily. And I think a a big thing that you probably resonate with, tell me if it's true or not, but uh, the success that people see when you've achieved the billions or when you've made the blockbuster or when you've gotten the Olympic gold medal, that's what people see. But they don't see all the time and the energy and the trading off things that that uh, you know might have been more pleasurable in the short term, but long term wouldn't have given them that fulfillment and success in in uh, being their greatest possible self. So I know that the the things that people see in public, they have no idea what goes into the years and the years and the years of the overnight success. Usually, is ten, twenty years in the making. Of all the absolutely, by the way, on that. The pride of accomplishment, the sense of accomplishment, the part of me that says, well done, Chris, for the 112 hour. This isn't a one hour interview. This is a one hour interview with me and you. But the idea that you do 12 hours week after week after week, and you've done this consistently now that you've done this over 100. This is the 100th time. So by the time people are listening, it will be over 100 times. There is an I even see a smile on you, a grin, that sense of inner accomplishment cannot be achieved in a three-day or seven-day or 14-day seminar. It can't even be achieved over a short period of time. It can only be achieved by going on a long-term journey to success, on the road to success, long-term success. And I absolutely resonate with achievement. To me, it gives me the greatest sense of inner euphoria known to man. Mm. I pride myself on accomplishment and achievement. What I achieve, that's what I'm most proud of. Because even though I want to enjoy the journey, The journey will not always be enjoyable. And even though I want to applaud and celebrate every step of success along the way, and perhaps I can play a little bit more because I'm known for being a little bit, you know, being business, passion. We're known for being super productivity over here, you know, Mm -hmm. million and one things to do, New Yorker style, lifestyle. But it really is about the pride of accomplishment, the pride of achievement. And you've done that. So very well done there. And I'll also add while we're on this topic. Uh, Actually, I'd like to circle back. You mentioned about truth and integrity and ethics. I like to say that all executives wear a tie. Now, what do I mean by that? Tie is an acronym, stands for Mm T-I-E, truth, integrity, ethics. Mm -hmm. All executives wear a tie, and now you know the reason why. Mm -hmm. That's what it's really about at the end of the day. And what is integrity? Would you care to give them the definition or should I? Go for it, Wayne. Integrity is when your words, thoughts, and actions match most of the time. Now, why do we say most and not all of the time? Because the one time there's a hurricane in Florida and you said you were going to be there, and there's a hurricane, and you went to the airport and they stopped you. And then you drove to a car and you drove and they stopped you at the port again. And then you attempt to do everything in your power, humanly possible, and you still weren't able to make it. You called in advance to say, this one time, it's not going to work. You can still be an integrity. Hmm. But most of the time, your words, thoughts, and actions need to match. Now, ethics is doing the right thing because it's the right thing when no one's looking. Hmm. That's what it means to be ethical. Yeah. That's yeah, ethics. I, I love it. This is this is great. And I know a big philosophy for you or a big part of your your mindset, your paradigm is strategy. And strategy is super important for you. And I know uh, that you've empowered me in a lot to think more strategically, think more long-term. Why strategy? Why is that important for, for you, for business, for life? I think part of it is my personality. I'm what's called an INTJ, a mastermind personality. People confuse me for an ENTJ because I spend so much time as a DJ in front of a camera that I, I'm also a great master of ceremonies. And I am. But 
strategy to me is that people oftentimes are only looking one to two steps ahead, but strategic thinking is to think way ahead. It's to mm-hmm. think not only one to two steps, but even more so. If you're just in the now moment, if you're here and now, and you want to be here and now, because the only moment you really have any influence or access to is here and now. That's where we are. Where are we? We are here. We are now. But there's also what happens before and after. And what happens before and after is part of strategy. Strategy is anticipating as much as possible in advance, uh, evaluating consequences up front. It's learning how to anticipate as much as possible so that you can get into a position where you, you ask yourself, Worst case, realistic, best case, what are are the possible outcomes? And so you're properly prepared whichever way it rolls. If it goes worst case, you know what to do. If it goes realistic, you know what to do. Now, ultimately, what this will do if you do start to think strategically is you will find yourself always focusing and leaning in the direction of best case scenario. But by being prepared and covering the downside, the upside takes uh, takes care of itself. The upside takes care of itself. And that's a quote by... Donald J. Trump, who is now president of this country, he said as a billionaire at the mm. time. But So, I mean, you want to be strategic. You don't have to be the world's greatest strategist, but you want to be strategic enough to think of the, it as a game of chess. Is everyone in the right seat? If you have a bus, you want to make sure you have the right people on the right seats on the bus. Otherwise, you can imagine if the bus driver was in the back of the bus and the, and the, uh, the person who didn't even know the destination was driving the bus, what would happen? Mm. That would be a mess. Yeah, it would be. Uh, I know a big part of of what we do is we associate with real quality people, incredibly high standards. Uh, What would you recommend for our audience who's listening in terms of raising their own standards and and creating more uh, higher standards in their own life? Incredibly high standards begin with making a single commitment to yourself. Not so much to us, although if you do come on our marathon, you will be making that commitment as well. And that commitment is to Commit now and always to be forevermore to be being and becoming your greatest possible self. And if you can commit to being and becoming your greatest possible self, you're also inherently committing to always doing your best. Yeah. And there was a story by Earl Nyingel. He told a story of an admiral and a, and a young recruit. And the recruit had made a mistake. And the admiral called him into the office and said, did you do your best? And the person said, no, sir. But it stuck with the recruit long after the admiral had had a disapproving look, mm-hmm. and he d- made a vow to himself to do his best forevermore after that encounter. By always doing your best, by always choosing to be being and become your greatest possible self. To ask yourself, what would my greatest possible self do in this very scenario? Mm-hmm. That will lead to incredibly high standards. By the way, I love incredibly high standards because if you set the bar high, and we aim here, let's say someone falls short of our incredibly high standards. Well, you have standards to break your fall. But if you have no or low standards and you miss the bar, there's nothing left to break your fall. Yeah. So I think That's- incredibly high standards are what we want to be aiming and striving for. And it takes incredibly high standards to win at anything in life. And yeah. you want to be a winner. You want to be successful. Long term and instant immediate success. Yeah, yeah. I, I have an example that popped into your mind because you were talking about um, you know, just I forget what you said, but the the image of a a president or someone who was who was uh, flying a plane, he was flying a plane and something happens, his his engines malfunction and he like you know goes into this kind of nosedive and like barely survives this uh, like almost about to crash and uh, he finds out later that his mechanic put in the wrong fuel into his plane. He put in like regular gasoline instead of uh, jet engine fuel, something like that. And I said this? What was that? I said this? No, no, no. It's a, pre- it's a story I heard. Uh, and basically the, the okay. president or whoever this high ranking person was um, went to the mechanic and said, like, are you are you dumb like what i could have died like i i could have been you know killed because you made this mistake and so the end of the day the president or whoever this person is just reprimands the the mechanic and the mechanic's like okay well i i guess you want my resignation right and so the the this person says 
no, I don't want you to resign because I just spent, you know, this the cost of the plane teaching you a lesson. And I know you'll never make that mistake again. And I know one thing that we, we talk about is never make a fatal mistake. Um, we can make mistakes and we can grow from them. Uh, that could have been a, a fatal mistake uh, that, that that person made. So I'm, I'm curious in your terms of your perspective of when people make mistakes and they don't hit those incredibly high standards, how do how does someone know if it's a, a fatal mistake or a non-fatal mistake and how do they avoid making those mistakes in the future? Great question. And the answer is, if you're still there, it wasn't a fatal mistake. Hmm. If you're still alive, you still have a fighting chance. You still need to stand up for yourself and fight back and continue to continue act as if you're going to survive, survive, survive. You're going to succeed, succeed, succeed. Hmm. However, I will say that you'll, you'll know it's a fatal mistake because it usually is followed by two words. You're fired. Hmm. Or you normally hear someone say that it was the, uh, a fatal mistake. What really you're looking at is it's more about, I'm looking for just the right words to say this because I think the words are so important. That's really the intention behind the words. Yeah. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to learn from every failure, but you're going to make a lot, a lot, a lot of mistakes. But every time you make a mistake, you're going to bounce back twice so strong. You never make the same mistake twice because that instantly is a fatal mistake because it means you learn nothing from the mm. first time around. The other thing is most of the things that we think are fatal turn out not to be. I mean, most of the worst things that ever happened in my life never actually happened. That was Mark Twain who said that a while ago. Hmm. We tend to over-imagine everything is going to be a big deal, but it's also on the flip side of that double-edged sword because you care so much that you treat everything with that level of care and concern, that incredibly high standard, that as if this would be the one thing. And by giving that level of care and attention to detail, you will end up not making fail mistakes, you'll, you'll, you'll end up with a slight paranoia that, oh, did I do that right? But you'll end up having a much higher level of performance and much better by doing all of that energy and extra work to focus on what it is that you're looking to accomplish. And by the way, um, one more thing on the aspect of fatal mistakes. If you succeed, you're a genius. If you fail, you were an idiot for even trying it. So in other mm. words, if you go back into the boardroom afterwards with the feedback with that president of that plane, if he had made the right decision, he would have gone to come and talk how smart he was. If if the same person had not done it well or it hadn't worked out when you're rolling the dice, and sometimes it's not as clear cut as choose the right fuel, wrong fuel. Sometimes it's a roll of the dice. Right. Sometimes it's a calculated risk where if it works, you're applauded for being very, very successful. And if it, if it, you roll the dice, same thing, it's going to work, it's going to work, and it doesn't, you're going to be hammered because it didn't work out. And you need to understand the difference between those. Sometimes you're going to get hammered, not because it was the wrong move to make strategically, but because it didn't work out. And to learn the distinct difference between those. And also to learn that it's okay that you can take some heat, you can take some flack and keep on going because that just means you've got thick skin, you've got great mental armor. And as a result of that, you can proceed forward and achieve because you've got courage and confidence. You know who you are, you know what you're about, you know where you're going, and you know you're going to succeed. Mm -hmm. And that's how you win. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Uh, I know something that you've really taught and empowered me to do is is be more effective at deal making. And of course, you're the uh -oh. CEO. You're the you're the lead decision maker of Burn It Up Coaching, and, and uh, I couldn't be where I am without you. And uh, what would you say are some important aspects of making the deal happen? Well, I like to say, and I've said to a lot of people who've met me, because most of them don't meet me on the air. They meet me behind the camera, behind the scenes. I'm the behind the scenes guy because most of the great deals in any organization, business or large organization happen behind the scenes, usually under confidentiality. In fact, uh, if someone is in the audience watching this right now, they have an offer for us. Please send us an email to burnandlearnnow at gmail.com. Send it to my attention, Wayne Myers, CEO. Give me a, a short version, just, hey, the general idea of the offer is this. If we like it, we will reply with a link to schedule a confidential conference call, and we'll talk further, or maybe I'll call you back directly. Include your telephone, email, and contact details with that. Uh, with that said, though, deal-making is, is an art form. It's really an art, and I like to think that I'm very, very good at it. And interestingly enough, the most important deal isn't the ones that you make. It's the ones you don't make. Because there's a million and one people constantly offering you something, wanting something, wanting to do something. And you have to filter with the long term and the short run because every deal is very tempting in the immediate term. I've got a great idea. Next week, it's going to do all this great stuff. What's going to happen in a year from now, in 10 years? Hmm. 
20 years. Is it still going to be that great stuff? And also when it comes to deal making, you have to size people up very quickly. You have to assess who they are, what's this about, and is it congruent? Now, if you're thinking about sending and making an offer, burn it up, coaching, just go ahead and send us an offer, okay? Don't don't use all these, don't use anything I've said to excuse it. Go ahead and roll the dice anyway. The worst that we can say is no. The best we can say is yes. And the only way you're going to find out is to put it to the test. Deal making is an art. It's about seeing the deal first in your mind. It's about getting agreements, about finding a win-win. It's about figuring out how to make sure everyone benefits. Hmm. And benefits in a way that's sustainable and that's really going to work because there's a lot of great ideas on paper. How much of it can withstand that crucible, a trial by fire that an idea must go through? And those that do are great, great ideas that you implement. And of all the great ideas that we implement, some of them work, some of them don't. But it's not because we didn't make an effort to attempt. We did. And the ones that work, work really, really well. So I love making deals. In fact, I'm really excited about all the future possibilities that exist. Because now we have a one-year uh, run with the marathon, maybe a little bit more than a year. How long has this been going on for? Two years and three months. <laughs> See, I lose track of time. It's been such a long-term venture. 100 marathon episodes. We are ripe to have major deals start happening now. And I'm excitedly open to entertaining offers as they show up. So for deal making, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's it's interesting because I think people have different trajectories on how they grow and how fast they grow and different things like that. I know that that you're you've been the uh with the high speed tortoise. I've been more yes. of the, the hare who wants to go really, really fast and all these different directions and stuff. And I think uh for flying in formation and having a, a powerful team, it's really important to have both of those. And you know, while every time I'm trying to pull ahead, it you're you're just restraining me just enough so that I'm not like being careless and that I'm well, being hold focused. on a sec, Chris, hold on a sec. Time out, time out. Some of the time, actually, if you look at the statistics and you know, I went to the, went to work and we put a client profile together, everyone who's paid us money for all the different services we've rendered. Mm-hmm. And we actually found that 74% of the time when you brought an idea to me, I green lighted it. Mm-hmm. So most of the time I actually say yes, but if, if what's 74% subtract a hundred, that would be 26, 26% of the time. If, a little more than a quarter of the time, the person who has to green light it says no. It's very easy to see how psychologically the mindset would – it could become a situation where you would not be uh, be willing to go forward. But the truth of the matter is if you actually look at this just by the numbers, mm-hmm. I say yes a lot off, more often than I say no. But mm-hmm. what's important to me is it has to have character. It has to be the right fit. They have to be the right people. We have to be the right people for them. It has to be – you know. there's a lot of factors that go into place. I think we're going to be – having a lot more deals that are yes coming down the pipeline. I don't want to speak of any specific offer at this moment in time, but my gut instinct is telling me we're going to have a lot more yes because we now have much more clarity and focus and we we have the track record and we have all the other stuff that we know what we're looking for. And yeah. But if anyone in the audience is looking to have has a great idea and offer for us, do send it to us. Go to burnupcoaching.com, click the contact tab and send it to me. And I'll be happy to review it and get back to you, or we'll schedule a confidential conference call. And we'll, we'll take it from there. I, I think it'd be exciting. What I want to see if you're going to make an offer is great energy. You have to really believe in what you're saying. That's the first key. You have to think it's going to work. Yeah. You have to be excited about it. the great energy. Yeah. That's how you start to make great deals happen. Then you go through the process, and hmm. that's that. That's powerful. I love it. Well, I think the the thing I wanted to highlight is how having a balanced team, because I think a lot of people who are listening to this are entrepreneurs, leaders, visionaries, people who want to share their message with the world, who want to to make a difference and to to make the world a better place. And in the process of that, they're owning their genius, they're owning their message, and that doesn't mean that they have to do everything. It just means to do what they're they're really good at and then have a team who can support them in doing the other things that they aren't as good at or aren't as high value uh, dollar producing activities. Would it be all right if I added something here? Yeah. We need to also make a distinction between the solopreneur, the entrepreneur who's small business and it's all about the passion and the creativity and you always need that. And ideally, you need someone to be the dispassionate objective third person, basically the role I played with you, which is to observe it from a more logical standpoint, say, okay, what part of this vision can we actually implement? And will that actually work if we build a building around it? Mm -hmm. I would say, though, that there's a whole different mindset when it comes to deal making at an organization. When it's a big deal, it's almost never a single individual. Even if you have someone like Chris Burns, host of Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self, there is a 
team of people that are giving feedback, who are going to bat the idea around. And so you need to identify when you're doing deal making, especially for large organizations, whether it's businesses or otherwise, who in the organization is the the face of it, who is the actual decision maker in the organization, who else has influence over that decision. One rule of thumb is be nice to everyone, be respectful to everyone, mm-hmm. answer everyone's questions to the best of your ability, leave everyone feeling whole, complete, resolved, and that they were uh, complete and fully answered because you never know who it is. And I'd be nice to everyone. I, I'm even respectful to the janitors. Mm-hmm. If I go into a uh, corporate office and we're presenting an idea if I'm making the pitch. And another rule is if I want someone, I go to them. If they want me, they come to me and it works out quite well. So when you're in a smaller business and you're looking to attract bigger deals, please keep those factors in mind. If it's just small business, you call the person up, it's a handshake or it's something I, I would encourage you to put in right and sign it, by the way. But because we honor what's in right and signed here. But uh, with that said, at the smaller level, it's about the connection and the passion, the feeling. But if you want to build something that's built to last, it has to operate when you're no longer involved or around. Hmm. And Benjamin Franklin designed his organizations to, that were built to last. And he built them in such a way that they could continue to function and function very well long after Benjamin Franklin was no longer around hmm. to help them function. So that's that's a key. And I love passion. I love entrepreneurial passion. It's my favorite thing. Hmm. I love that this is Chris's passion. I've learned to love personal development. As soon as I realized we could change and transform lives and make money at that, oh my God, what an amazing thing. Yes. So yeah. a lot of fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Um, and I know that we're, we've got a lot of things coming on uh, online. I'm focusing on helping people launch their podcast, get their message out into the world in a big way. Is there anything that you can hint at or tease what might be coming for, for Burn It Up Coaching that you're excited about or do you want to keep it under wraps? I would love to hear what, what you uh, are excited about in the future. Well, I will definitely be back many times on a project-by-project basis on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self to share with you Chris and the whole world as as they become unveiled. And I won't didn't want to say anything too soon, but I will say we have a lot of great stuff in the pipeline. We are very excited there. We're at a at a new level of growth in our business where we we have not a fork in a road, but five different directions. Mm-hmm. And each one each route on our journey of success, this long-term success, has its benefits. And it's other than benefits. And it's the key is now at this moment in time, which one will we choose? They're all great options. We're going to win either way. The people who work with us and get involved are going to win a big win. I encourage you, if you're watching this now, get involved with us. Get involved with Chris in the podcasting. Get involved. Watch Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self Marathon each and every week, Wednesdays. Uh, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Go to facebook.com forward slash TH3 Burns. And if you're at all interested in inviting Chris or myself to come speak to your audience or live event, please go to burnitupcoaching.com forward slash request speaker. There's a form you fill out and we can then explore that with you. If you're open to having myself or Chris for coaching, we also have another link for you. Get your pens ready, www.burnitupcoaching.com forward slash first call. Or just send us an email and say express interest and we'll set up a confidential conference call and from there decide where what's the best route to go. And Chris, is there anything else that we're doing right now that you feel is really important to emphasize at this moment in time that we want to put most of the energy towards? Yeah, the two big things are, one, if you feel like you could be a great guest on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self, go to beyourgps.com forward slash be our guest, and you can find out more about that. And if you want to schedule a a pre-interview call, beyourgps.com forward slash pre-interview. And I would love to talk to you and see if it's a good fit for you to come on and possibly help you by getting your message out to the world in a bigger way. So that's number one. And then the other thing is helping people launch their podcasts. I love Love, love helping empower people to own their message, to share that with the world in a big way. And I, I've seen so much value come from creating this platform, this 12-hour marathon. All the people I've been connected with, expanding my network of world changers, of people who I who I am inspired by, who I look up to, who I support, who I coach. Just It's all an incredible a diverse mix of human beings who uh, I'm able to interact with. And I've, I know I've created so much clarity on who I am and my purpose and my message simply by starting this show, by starting this 12-hour marathon. So wherever people are at, if you are at the beginning of your journey and you're committed to making a bigger impact, growing your network, growing your clarity on who you are and what you stand for, 
Or if you've been on the journey for a while, you know who you are, you know your expertise, and now it's just time to get that out to the world in a bigger way. Either one of you are an awesome fit for our uh, podcast launch mastermind. We do it every quarter. The next one starts in about the third week of July. So if you want to find out more about that, send me an email, chris at beergps.com. Find me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash th 3 Burns or on Instagram at I am millionaire Chris. And you can definitely message me and let me know what you are most excited about, what possibility you're investigating about starting your own platform, your own podcast, and getting your message out to the world. Also, I'd like to point out that if there's anyone in the world that you should be learning how to run a podcast, and I would even add a marathon because we do Facebook live stream. So it's both video and audio only. Chris Burns is the man that you should be learning from because he has the track record. And I know because I've been here, I can prove it, I can verify it and vouch for him. 100th anniversary episode, marathon, excuse me, 100 marathons, 12 hours each. You, you, there's no one I think on earth right now on planet earth who has that level of experience that is documented. It's pre-recorded. You can see all of it. You can check it. And if you're going to be starting a podcast, you have a podcast, you're looking to do some of the podcasting, do this with Chris. He's excited about this. You're going to get a lot of value. It will really rock and roll your day. And again, Chris, tell them what to do if they want to get involved one more time. Yeah. Send me an email, chris at beergps.com. Message me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash th3 burns or Instagram at I am millionaire chris. And just let me know you are curious, you're investigating, you're committed, wherever you're at on the spectrum. I'll support you in going whatever direction I feel is the best fit for you. Uh, maybe we're a perfect fit. Maybe we're not. Either way, I just want you to get to where you need to go to become your greatest possible self. I want to support you on that journey. Yeah. Roll the dice, contact Chris. It's a calculated risk. The worst you can say is no. The best you can say is yes. And I get you're going to say yes a lot more because you say yes a lot more than I do. So that's right. That's that right. Works and, well. and Wayne, I also want to, uh, in, in this last portion of the, of the interview, I want to hear about 60 seconds of your greatest wisdom, inspiration, and empowerment for our audience. Before we dive into that, though, I just want to acknowledge you, man. I so, so, so appreciate you. I had a you. question about yeah. that, actually. Yeah. Uh, with the last 60 seconds, this is the spot that may go on YouTube to invite people to come on watch this marathon, uh, this podcast interview. Is that correct? It's it's a highlight. It's an Instagram highlight. So to give keep people an idea of what they might get into and receive on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self podcast and YouTube and what we're all about. So it's to invite them to watch the show, the marathon, the podcast. The The big thing is to be you. And just share your message, share your truth. And the right people will want to find out more. So it's not so much about a call to action to tune in, although you can include that. It's more so to be you and share what, what's important to you and what comes from your heart. Does that make sense? I'll do my best then. <laughs> but you'll, Go ahead, you were saying? You'll do great. I'm sure you will, Wayne. Uh, so I, I want to acknowledge you. I do acknowledge you, Wayne, for consistently being the person who's focused on the long term, who keeps us moving towards our greatest possible selves as individuals, as well as a company, and to be able to really serve a lot of people, impact the world in big, big ways, constantly holding a vision of me as greater than I see myself in certain ways, and just empowering me to own my own vision and own who I am and what I stand for. And uh, I really just appreciate week after week after week, your consistency, your resilience, your uh, integrity, your truth, your ethics that you really exemplify in our company and, and model for me. And I just, I'm so grateful to have you on my team flying in for information and to have you as a CEO of Burned Up Coaching, helping us and uh, leading us to massive success. And I'm so excited for all the greatness that's coming, all the stages that we're going to be on together and separately and all the, the impact that we can create in the world. So I really appreciate you, man. Well, two words, Chris, you're welcome. Thank you. And I applaud and recognize you for the amazing amount of work it took you to continuously week after week be here each and every hour of this 12-hour marathon. What an amazing achievement that has been and continues to be and Thank will you. be. Yes. Now the world is going to find out it, about it in an even bigger way. I can't wait to be on stage with you. It's going to be a lot of fun, definitely. Definitely. Okay, so, so you got to time this, or how's that work? Yeah, let's let's hear your sixty seconds. Just do your best to approximate. We'll we'll take care of the rest. What's your sixty seconds? Your minute to win it, Wayne Myers. Okay, 
Hi there, my name is Wayne Edward Myers, the voice of personal development and CEO and co-founder of Burn It Up Coaching, Inc., the personal development company behind becoming your greatest possible self. And I want you to commit to being and becoming your greatest possible self by tuning in each and every week to Chris Burns, host of Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self Marathon and Podcast. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash TH3 Burns now to sign up. To learn more about Burn It Up Coaching, go to www.burnitupcoaching.com. To learn more about the marathon and podcast, go to www.beyourgps.com. And always remember to keep going, keep growing, stay true all the way through. Take a step in the right direction today. Start today. What more is there to say? And always remember, always, always remember, in the moments when you've hit rock bottom, there's only one direction you can go, up. This has been Wayne Edward Myers, CEO and co-founder of Burn Up Coaching, letting you know, as the voice of personal development, this has been a wonderful, wonderful minute of inspiration. And I hope to see much more of you in person, on stage, off stage, or anywhere and everywhere we bump into each other. Until next time, keep going, keep growing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Wayne. I appreciate you and I appreciate you being here on this hour. And everyone, definitely stay connected with us. And Wayne, thanks for being here. We'll see you soon, okay? Well, thank you very much, Chris, for having me on. I look forward to coming back many more times as we have really cool stuff we're unveiling. Absolutely. I'll see you soon. Till next time.